Hello everyone and welcome back guys to a brand new video where today we're here back with round 19 of season 5 of the F1 2020 My Team Career Mode. Yes, I'm well aware we've been doing a lot of other content on the channel over the last few days. Obviously we've had the start of my new F1 2021 Alpine Career Mode. If you guys haven't checked that out already, go back and do so. It's been brilliant fun in the first few races that we've done over the course of that series. We've also been diving into MotoGP 21 as well. Obviously, we made a video on that yesterday. Again, if you missed out on that one, definitely, definitely go back and check it out if it's something you guys are interested in. But, of course, my team, it's not going away just yet. We've got a few more races still to go of Season 5, and, of course, we're still looking towards doing a shortened Season 6 as well. Is currently the plan uh, that I'm thinking of. But, yeah, if you missed out on the last race from this series as well, Definitely, definitely, definitely go back and check it out from the Japanese Grand Prix. It kind of got squashed uh, behind the F1 2021 game news. So I know a lot of you guys that normally watch these videos probably did miss out on that one. And yeah, massive, massive news from that. So this is your five second warning, obviously, to go back and check out that video. And that is it. We're going in. Round 19 of the year. We're champions already. We've got a hundred and what's that? 119 points now. The gap to George Russell behind us, with 104 points available uh, between now and the end of the year. We can sit back, so we can relax, we can enjoy it. We have still got to worry about the constructors. Battle Mercedes are still actually, I think, are what 122 behind us in the constructors championship. So yeah, still a little bit going on there. Obviously, we've got to be careful uh, that they don't try to get the jump on us in the constructors championship. But again, we're looking pretty comfortable uh, with just four races to go. It does also mean, like we have done in the McLaren RTG, we're going to be starting from the back for the final four races. May as well have a bit of fun with it and enjoy the last few rounds whilst we can, obviously, as we get ready for Season 6. So, yeah, let's dive in then, straight away, into the US Grand Prix. Here we are then in one of the fastest growing cities in the United States, the fabulous Austin in the great state of Texas. The circuit itself, 14 miles southeast of the city centre and home to the US Grand Prix since 2012. The latest in a long list of iconic tracks to have that honour. We have 10 turns to the left and 10 to the right here at the fantastic Circuit of the Americas. Overtaking opportunities into turns 1 and 12 at this anti-clockwise 3.6 mile track. But we may well see cars struggle to slow down there today as the wet weather does interfere with the low speed grip. Anthony Davidson is alongside me as usual for the race today. Let's talk about Mr. Monaco. No grip penalties, no mitigating circumstances, just a poor qualifying performance and a very disappointing start position for them today. They'll have a sinking feeling as they look up from the cockpit and realise they're in a different postcode to the start line for sure. But the one positive they can hold on to is that the car is quick and they can make their way through the field. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. George Russell will begin today's event from pole position, and it's Valtteri Bottas that completes the front row. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Verstappen, Gasly, Daniel Kvyat and Albon, Leclerc, Ocon, Norris and Carlos Sainz, Stroll, Perez and Guan Yu Zhou, and Hamilton, Raikkonen, King, Nobuharu Matsushita, and Antonio Giovinazzi, Magnussen, De Vries, Mr. Monaco, and Nicholas Latifi. Now, it's almost time for lights out, so let's go down to the track. So here we are then, ready on the grid, round 19 of the World Championship. Despite trying to start at the back, Nicholas Latifi somehow still uh, able to find himself behind us, ready for the start of the Grand Prix today. But it is a dry to wet race. So that could make things obviously very, very interesting in terms of the strategy as well. So hopefully we can keep it clean, keep it tidy. And obviously, I mean, points should very easily be the aim. But if we can get, you know, maybe back up towards the Alpha Towers as well, it's great to see. You know, really, we have got a good three-way battle going on between the Mercs, us, and Alpha Tower. It's sort of like the team to beat at the moment as well. So that's obviously really good fun. So hopefully, you know, if we get a well-timed safety guard, we can try and get back up towards those guys as well then. But yeah, like we said... Title done and dusted. We can have a bit of fun. Four races to go of the World Championship. And let's do this thing. Starting off here at the Circuit of the Americas. It's five red lights. And it's lights out. And away we go. Not off to the best start in the world. We'll try and use a bit of ERS as we head down towards turn one. There is Magnussen. But it's to the inside. Oh, big lockup on the front. But somehow 
We find our room right in the outside. We got one of the Renos there who just... Yeah, there we go. Raikkonen was definitely never going to give us any room as they're three wide just in front down the hill. Is Matsushita going to be able to pull off a worldy of a move? Yes, he is. Fair play to Matsushita there as that's one of the Ferraris trying to look back past us. That was Hamilton down in towards the end of the first sector there. Obviously, really the king of Kota. Lewis Hampton obviously has won so many Grand Prix around this venue in the past, but I don't think today in that Ferrari he's going to be... He's probably not really going to be fighting for points either. I'll be honest, never mind race victories there. As we have had a good start though, up to 16th place. Might be able to look past Raikkonen as we head down the hill there. Thought we were going to break way too late into the corner, but we do get it slowed down nice and tidy there. So up to 15th off the start. Six places made up on the opening lap of this Grand Prix, but it is still the two mercs. And then our teammate Max Verstappen making up the top three there. Hamilton down in 17th. Charles Leclerc is in 5th. Goes to show just how quick he has become on the F1 games as well. There. But yeah, we've got Guan Yu Zhou and Matsushita. Of course, the two rookies now just in front of us. Or well, the two F2 stars. Well, can you really call Matsushita an F2 star in the real world? I'm not so sure. So there we go. End of lap 1. George Russell does still lead the way. Obviously, I would call him our main title rival, but of course he can't beat us now, so not really a rival anymore. As we cross onto lap two of the Grand Prix there, both of the Haskells into the pits. It's been a disastrous start for them in their home Grand Prix. Had a really tough time over the last couple of years in the world of Formula One in this alternate universe. I think, let's be fair, the same can be said in real life as well. But we're all over the back of Guan Yu Zhou as we head down the hill, but just nowhere to go. Holy moly, that was a bit of an interesting one. Not sure how we ended up there, but somehow we keep it pointing in the right direction again. Just so much oversteer at this early stage as we're just trying to find the grip limits. We have actually had quite a history of wet US Grand Prix in the My Team career mode. I think it was back in Season 2. We actually had a crazy last couple of laps where the track got... I think it dried out, in fact. And everyone stayed out on the Inters, so we made up like 20 seconds in the last lap of the Grand Prix. They're up the inside of Guan Yu Zhou into T1, however, and we're up into P14. Hopefully Matsushita should be a little bit easier to navigate, but we need to try and continue making forward momentum. Try not to drop it as we head over the crest this time round, but we are going to be close to Matsushita. We'll have a look up the inside. Go for a bit of a cheeky dive bomb. And team saying the rain is going to be away in 10 minutes. So that's probably going to be about like six laps there or thereabouts. We can easily get the tyres, hopefully, to the dry period, depending, of course, how quickly the track dries up. Kota's generally been pretty good for drainage on the F1 games, but we'll wait and see. Coming towards the end of lap five, reassuring to know the pace in the clear air is still there. Hasn't taken us long to get to the back of Carlos Sainz as we go purple through the middle sector. I think this train really does pretty much extend right up to our teammate Max Verstappen in P3 as the Mercs just pulling away a little bit. We saw Alpha Tauri being quick last weekend. This time around it seems like it's Mercs time to shine once more. Can we get a good run on Carlos out of the final corner? Let's wait and see. Try and avoid the wheel spin as we go into the 144s. That's good to see as we head back up towards turn one. We'll have a look at the inside, try and catch him by surprise. We'll run a bit deep, but he gives us the room. I'm up at a 12th. I think Carlos knew that move was going to be coming soon. Next up, however, Sergio Perez. Can we pull off a similar move to Perez as we did to Carlos one lap ago? Renault don't have a particularly great car at the moment. You can see Reichland's really just been floundering around with the back markers. We're a little bit further back from Sergio as we head up the hill. Oh my, he's broken earlier than I was expecting, though. A little bit of contact, but that actually wasn't really a move I was intending to make that time. Sergio broke a little bit earlier than I wanted to down in towards T1, and we've pulled it off. Next up, Lando Norris, and we then will climb ourselves up into the points. A lot closer to Lando as we head down the back straight. Obviously, he's really got no slipstream from the guys in front to help him out either. So we're going to have a bit of a look. Got to be brave on the brakes, and we will pull another move off. Two moves in one lap that time round as Daniel Ricciardo would have liked that move. Just snagged the inside wheel. But we got it slowed down, we got it placed on the apex, and we got ourselves placed into the points. I think I've always felt I'm at my best on a, a drying track on the Formula 1 games, I'll be honest. I always just feel like we can find a lot of confidence in the car. And really can just sort of balance it on that knife edge as well. There. As you can see, just overstepping the mark ever so slightly. 
are not losing much in the process. Purple through sector one. Purple through sector two. And it is going to be a new fast lap of the Grand Prix there. Almost into the 143s as we're taking a lot of time out of Lance Stroll in the racing point. That time around I wasn't ready to send it. And we almost completely careered into the back of him. We got away with it though. The rain has now stopped as well around this Austin based circuit. So it shouldn't be long before we're looking at a set of dries as well. Just again, getting a little bit over exuberant on the throttle. Can we gain a bit in towards the hairpin? We'll try and get a good run on the exit as well on the Canadian. Can we get a good run down the back straight? Yes, we can. Got a lot of overspeed on that stroll early on. Are we going to be close enough though this time around to go for anything? We're a bit closer than I think we were to Lando Norris. So I'll have a look up the inside. And again... A big old dive bomb. But we got it slowed down. We got it hooked up. And we got another place. On to lap 10. I don't think it's going to be long before we get the call to come in onto a set of the dry tyres. Not sure whether the mediums are going to be able to see us right the way through to the end. Or whether it's worth trying to do a set of double softs. But now we're all over the back of Alex Albon and the Red Bull. Not a strong car. Down the straights. Might be better under braking though. Than a lot of the other guys we've come up against. But we will slot up the inside. Oh, tried to turn enemy, did Alex Album? But again, we weren't having any of it. I think it's the right time to take the gamble. I'm going to come in and go onto a set of mediums at the end of this lap. Where is the call? There it is. We're going to try and get these tyres to the end of the Grand Prix. 18 laps is a bit aggressive. But code tyre wear normally isn't too bad. It's a bit brave making the call before the team do, but I think everyone else is probably going to get told to very, very soon after this. So if we can sort of finesse this strategy and get back out there, we could be in good shape to try and move ourselves up a few more places up the order. If we get close to the Alpha Tauri, that'd be rather good. Medium tyres on the release, wagon. 2.8 second stop isn't too bad as well, and we're going to come out in a lot of clear air, which is always nice. It's a lot of wheel spin on the exit, though. We'll see what the grip's like as we head through the first sector. Feels... Oh, not much at the back end. Seem to be able to get good rotation, though, through the front. Might have been a little bit early, but I don't think we're too far away. Might be this lap that the tyres really start to come into their own as we head through the first sector. Oh, no, we might have done this a bit too soon in this US Grand Prix. But I say that. Understand there as well. Yeah, might have been a bit too early, but I don't think we're far away. Uh, there we go. Most of the people into the pits now in this Grand Prix, so we were definitely pretty much right there, but I think we just, yeah, went one lap too early in this Grand Prix. But saying that, we could have probably lost a load of time through the pit window as well, so we probably haven't lost out too much in this Grand Prix. Everyone else. Round in the final corner, though. Where are we going to move up to in this Grand Prix? Are we going to gain any spots through people getting held in the pits? Let's find out. We're going to come out right pretty much where we were, to be honest. I think we've gained a little bit on the likes of Charles Leclerc. Stroll's been able to get back past us, though, so it's all a bit weird and wonderful, as they're all on a set of softs. So I'm not too sure what their plan of action is to the end of the Grand Prix, whether they're doing a double soft stint or what. But up at 8th place, so we have still made gains... We're now a lot closer to a few more cars. It's shaken up the order a bit, as I think one of the Mercedes has been forced behind Verstappen. The joys of having to double stack. No flags out as well. In Sector 1, I think that's one of the Renaults going slowly, is it? Oh, I think it's Raikkonen, who's going to fall to the wayside in this Grand Prix. See where Kimi famously took his last F1 victory. And we're going to get a safety car. So that probably won't change things too much, as everyone's just pit. But again, I'm still intrigued to know what everyone's tyre strides is. Well, end of lap 15 then. The safety car is about to peel back into the pit lane. And we are going to have 13 laps of racing to the end of this one. I've got my foot to the floor. Why won't it let me go anywhere? Come on, Cody's. That really shouldn't be an issue. We're still getting on these games. But yeah, this could get really interesting though. If the AI can't get their softs to the end, which everyone else is on... I reckon these mediums might just do it. I mean, we were on 8% wear. They were only going about 3% a lap when we were in racing conditions. Obviously, bearing in mind, we had to do a lap as well on some horrible track conditions. So I think we could still be in with a good shout here, depending, of course, about what the pace is like on these tyres and then what the Mercs can do towards the end. Let's get ready to go. Well, I mean, we are going racing again. 
the team are saying about new strats. They're saying pit in the lap 20 onto a set of softs. I don't think it's worth it. We'll we'll stick with the... Well, I reckon it's the no stop, but obviously we've already pit once. So that's not going to be that helpful. Charles Leclerc, they're really trying to apply some pressure. So we head through the first sector, though. Obviously, these tyres don't switch on as quickly as the softs, but it's always insane. Go back to just how much grip you've got in the dry there. It's all Charles Leclerc. Almost careered into the back of me out of the S's there. But we do hold on to our position. And hopefully we can try and match, or at least, well, hopefully at least match, sort of Stroll's pace on those softs. If you think you can get past, make use of the overtake button and see what you can do. That's a 29-4 new fast after the Grand Prix. We only in the 31, so that just goes to show being at the front of the field. Of course, slightly quicker car on paper. And of course, much better rubber as well is really helping him out. Oh, come on. we got to try and really just... Well, again, we don't need to try and push to the absolute limits. Obviously, we don't want to make any mistakes. But we have got to be careful. Pace is pretty much equalised then between myself and Atlant Stroll. I think now we've got to wait for their soft tyres to start falling off a little bit. And then we can start making gains. But again, they're only going to go to like lap 20, which should pretty much be halfway from when, obviously, they pit before. Won't be too long before hopefully we're going to cycle our way right to the front of the field. Unless, of course, anyone's either brave enough or stupid enough to try and get those softs right to the end. Would that be possible? Surely that's not doable. Our mediums are going to be pretty close by the end. You can see already up to 16%. But these should be safe. Charles Leclerc, though, has got some DRS on us as we head down the back straight. But that Ferrari is just such a boat down the straights. He's barely gained anything. Poor old Charles Leclerc. An absolute beast of a driver stuck in an absolute boat of a Ferrari. Just like real life last year. Last and this year, Ferrari are okay. Oh, there we go. Charles Leclerc behind us. I was back to say no one into the pits at the end of lap 19. But Leclerc, the first man in at the end of 19 there. So he's got nine laps to go on a fresh set of those tyres. But are others still thinking about it? Oh, we got strolling off on, having a bit of a battle up the road. Stroll going to be able to pull that move off? Yes, he can. Lance Stroll. Oh. So we're just oversteering everywhere at the moment. Lance Stroll, a bit of sixth place of this Grand Prix. Not a bad day out for the f uh, racing point driver. I know I still get stick from people that are saying I call them Force India. Force a habit. And as soon as I say that, Stroll dives into the pit lane. As joined by one of the Mercedes. Not sure which one it was. Is it Bottas? Yes, it is. Bottas in. So a bit of fifth place then of the Grand Prix and all four cars in front of us, four different teams, are they all going to pit now as we head on to lap 21? Three quarters distance of this Grand Prix, still a lot will change. The Stappen's just been relegated to P3 by Pierre Gasly, so not looking great for our teammate at the moment as he just really has never got to grips with this car over the entirety of the season as proven by the fact I think we've basically scored twice his points at this late stage of the year and you never see that with Max Verstappen. I honestly thought he would be the man that takes a title away from us given equal machinery. I think a lot of you guys did as well, but this year has not been Verstappen's and we're still unsure at the moment as to whether he's going to renew. Top three into the pit lane at the end of lap 21. Is Ocon is going to follow him in as well, so we are therefore going to inherit the lead of the US Grand Prix with six to go here. But what is going to be the gap to George Russell behind us? He's going to be rapid towards the end of this race. We're still sat in the mid-130s. I think the top guy is still probably running 29s. And the gap to Rosso behind us is going to be about 7 seconds. So he is not going to be far away from us come the end of this race. This could, yeah, actually looking at him, be really close by the end if he continues to close back in at the rate he was closing in earlier, or pulling away earlier on. We haven't had the best lap in the world, but as we head out the final corner, the gap to Russell down to four seconds already, so it might not be as close as I thought it would be by the end. George Russell might have us with a few laps to go here as we head on to lap 23. We're still going to give it our all, though. Of course, we're still going to try and defend. I always battle for our position in these sorts of situations, but yeah, less than six to go now. And George Russell is closing in rapidly. There we go. Now we're starting to hit our marks once again as we head towards the end of lap 23. The gap to Russell only come down 2.7 now, the gap, as we set a new PB in this Grand Prix. Russell, though, at 29-0. Goes to show just how quickly he's gaining still. He should be with us by the well by the start of lap 26. So three laps to defend from him. Might be a tall order. End of lap 24. The gap down to just one second now. 
between myself and Russell as he goes faster again. There are 28-9. Russell is absolutely hitting his marks at this stage of the day. And again, oh, as we struggle for grip through turn one, I think this is going to be inevitable between myself and George. But again, doesn't mean I'm going to give up just yet as we head back through the S's. You can see just how much time he gains through there, but not going to be able to find much opportunity to get around us through the first sector. And generally, down the back straight, we've been pretty quick so far, which is obviously always going to be the best opportunity to try and make anything work around this Grand Prix circuit. You can see, though, just how quick he is. He might even get a run down in towards the head, but he thinks about it, but can't quite get the run there. We'll try and get on the power nice and early. Use all of our overtake, all of our rich revs as well. Is George Russell going to be able to close in again? Is he now going to have the DRS on us as we head up the back straight? You can see he's gaining, but he's not going to gain enough this time round. So as we head in towards the next corner, we are still going to have the lead for now. Free to go then here from Kota, and I'm sure it's going to be the same story again through the first sector of George Russell making big, big gains on us. But we've got, if we've got this much top-end speed over him, the Honda Power Unit working wonders still, as it has done throughout the entirety of this World Championship. Back through the S's. Are they going to be able to defend from Hamilton? Again, he just gets a little bit of dirty air. Oh, sorry, Russell even got that's a throwback, isn't it? Oh, Russell, though, has a look up the inside, just where Charles Leclerc tried to, but again, nothing going there. Is he going to be able to get a run down the hill? He's certainly, again, going to be all over our gearbox, but you just park it on the apex, make sure he doesn't get any run, careful on the wheel spin. And again, hopefully, we should be good, unless, of course, he didn't use ERS last time round. He is a little bit closer this time, he's going to get a much bigger run on us. So we head back down towards the next couple of corners, in towards Sector 3. Again, just park it tidy on the apex. We're doing everything we need to at the moment. Hamilton from Bahrain versus Max Verstappen this year has given me those sorts of vibes as well. Huge amount of oversteer there. We accidentally cut across George Russell on the exit. But again, I think we're just about going to have enough. Oh, Russell again, big run as we head down the hill. But again, he just doesn't seem to want to show the nose in towards here. He's looking to try and get a run out onto the back straight. And again, if he got the DRS, then made the move, we probably wouldn't be able to get back past him. As we head back up the straight with her, we are really now starting to cause a bit of a train in this Grand Prix. The top five, less than two seconds separating us all at the moment. But we're still doing enough, just, only just, to defend against George Russell with just over a lap to go. And in the final corner then, ready to start the final lap of the US Grand Prix and from 21st on the grid. We've done a couple of last to first in this game, but could we, well, it won't be a last to first, of course, because of the Latifi, but winning from outside the top 20 is still not a common occurrence in the world of Formula 1. Russell, though, trying to have a look around the outside through turn 1. I thought he might just have got the move there. But again, we defend firm, but fairly, as we head in towards the S's for the final time. Try and get these destroyed medium tyres lumbered around there. As we just try and park it where we need to, Russell again tries to show the nose, but we are having none of it. As we head up over the top of the hill there, down the hill once more, in towards the hairpin. This time around, Russell looks for it. He might try and get a run on us down in towards the straightaway here, and you can see he has got the move. But are we going to be able to get the slipstream? Is George Russell now on the final lap of this US Grand Prix going to be able to pull away? Again, we're gaining ever so slightly in the toe as we head down the straightaway here. We're going to have to dive it on him. Russell, we go up the inside once more. Can we make the move work? Yes, Russell bails out of it. He doesn't have the grip on those softs. They must be starting to fall away at the end of this Grand Prix. And a final lap battle here at the US Grand Prix circuit between myself and George Russell. Our former teammate runs massively wide through there. And he actually might lose the place to Bottas. He has lost the place to Valtteri Bottas in the final few corners of the Grand Prix. Russell goes from hero to zero from leading the race to finishing P3 as we round the final corner though from 21st on the grid somehow we come through to win the US Grand Prix great drive we did it good job It's certainly been an incredible year for Formula One, and our drivers have all pushed themselves this season, making it one of the most compelling years of racing in history. There can only be one champion, however, and here they are now, our new Formula One World Drivers' Champion.
That's a spectacular victory then, and with it, the championship is secure. It's been a magnificent season, and they thoroughly deserve the cheers of the crowd here today. Talk to me, Ants. What was it that set them apart from the competition today? Well, the safety car completely changed the race, didn't it? It's hard to say exactly what would have happened without it, but there's no question that they came out of that situation in a good position. The faces on our top three look so incredibly happy as they make their way up to the podium. A much-deserved victory and a brilliant performance from them all. Now, let's discuss, Ants. Who would you say is a contender for driver of the day? I have to give it to Mr. Monaco. They did a great job at getting the most out of their tyres without losing pace, something that's a very handy skill to have in modern-day Formula 1. Let's move on to the constructors. After an event like that, who knows what the sport has in store for us next time? Be sure to join us again as we continue to bring you the latest excitement in Formula 1. Well, there we are then, guys, the end of the US Grand Prix. And I said before this one... Alpha Tauri, Mercedes and 2 and 2 Motorsport all duking out for the best car in Formula 1. And for the fact that all six cars finished within two seconds, safe to say that battle is still well and firmly on at this late stage of the year there. It doesn't seem like we're going to get any regulation changes ready for Season 6. So this battle could, bat uh, I mean, it could rage on, yeah, in towards the new year there. But it is another race victory at the end of the day, like we said, from 21st on the grid. No doubt about it, though. Safety car. Uh, the changeable conditions and, of course, Raikkonen's retirement completely won that for us today. I'm not going to try and deny it uh, one bit there. We did a good job, I want to feel like, uh, to defend from George Russell towards the end there. And Valtteri Bottas able to sneak by him really does mean the full picture probably isn't painted at the end of the day there. Gasly, Verstappen, Kvyat, 4th, 5th and 6th ahead of Stroll, Leclerc, Ocon and Albon rounding out your top 10 there. You see both McLarens just missed out on points at the end of the day. There is the rest of your order. The Haskars down in last and second to last. Of your finishes there, a very, very disappointing day for those guys. Championship-wise, though, 118, the gap at the top. The only movers, though, Kvyat gets back past Ocon on 119 to 118 points there. Kvyat, yeah, definitely needs to finish P6 this year if he wants to try and keep a hold of that Alpha Tauri ride. No other movers, though, championship-wise. Constructors, though, were very, very close now to wrapping up the Constructors' Championship. 132 points available and 123, the gap to Mercedes. So in the final three Grand Prix. We need a fifth place between myself and Max Verstappen there. So, yeah, it's looking very, very good for that. Ferrari's still in eighth, though, behind McLaren and Renault there. That's certainly a battle that we need to watch out for right to the end of the year there as well. But thank you all so much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed, do make sure you leave a like. Get yourself subscribed. And, yeah, we'll be back very, very soon. For round 20, we head back to Mexico. It's going to be a good one. A big thank you to our channel members for making these videos possible. You can be featured in these end clips as well as granted access to some other exclusive perks for just £1 a month by clicking the join button below.